Okay, so this is chapter 11 on marketing. Now, I don't know how much of this I'm going to be doing. Well, I mean, Faith First will have this kind of thing, but mainly through Facebook and at Etsy. I'll be using social media. YouTube a lot, actually. But here we go. Getting the word out. So you've got a farming method, a farm plan, a business plan, and funding sources. The only thing left to do is tell the world about it through marketing and advertising. Marketing in, in its simplest and purest form is the act of letting people know what you do and how it has value. Honestly, for most homesteaders, that isn't rocket science. All you need is a good dose of extroversion, a name on your for your homestead, and a business card. Homesteading in many ways is romanticized by the general public. The type of agriculture practiced by homesteaders, along with the rugged individualism that tends to be associated with it, has been mytho myth mythologized since the beginnings of the United States. Sorry. President Thomas Jefferson pointed out that yeoman farmers, small homesteaders, were the cru crux of the American Revolution. Laura Ingalls Wilder waxed poetic about her homesteading family in eight books, not counting the spin-offs, children's books, chapters books, and more they have sold well since 1932, and that's not counting the television show. Going back even further, the Back to the Land movements actually have their roots in the Roman Empire. My favorite homesteader from history is Lucius Quinticut. Quintius. Okay. A Roman dictator who was literally called from plowing his fields on his small farm to lead the empire during a time of crisis. He returned to his little homestead a mere 15 days later, having saved the country from destruction. Since all the groundwork has been laid, all a homesteader has to do is explain to others what she's up to, and everyone is on board. But what if you aren't an extrovert? To put it bluntly, you have to work on that. Until then, you can recruit other members of your family, friends, or even hire someone if you can afford it. Whichever you decide to do, make sure whoever has the responsibility of serving as a spokesperson for your operation is front and center when your homestead business has to interact with the public. In the meantime, get a logo design. Business cards printed and have some signs made. Well, we've got our logo. <clears throat> it doesn't have to be polished or even professionally done. If you can get one of your kids to paint the name of your homestead on a board, that's all you want to do. Then that's perfectly all right. You just need... To make sure that the people who want to know more about you and your homestead can find out. Later, as you get more comfortable with tooting your own horn, you can start to produce other marketing materials, flyers, direct mailers, recipe cards, whatever tickles your fancy. If you make enough money, you can start to place ads in the local papers, radio stations, or even on television. Or conversely, you don't have to do much more than the basics, business cards, homestead name, and signs. You can do that, and at least one member of your homestead is acting extroverted. Eventually, word of mouth will provide you with plenty of customers, especially if your products are high quality. The name game. When it comes to naming your homestead, you can get as complicated and esoteric as you want, or you can just name it after yourself and your family. It can be silly, it can be serious, it can be meaningful, or you just might like the way it sounds. Just make sure there's not another farm, homestead, or business engaged in a similar enterprise with the same name. Well, if there's already a Jones family farm in your area, you're not going to make your homestead business stand out by calling it the Jones family homestead. <clears throat> well, I've already uh, discussed why I chose Faith First Farm and Homestead, so... Well, social media and beyond. While the basics of marketing are the key, you will also want to consider putting together a website and establishing a social media presence. While a bit time-consuming and expensive, a website provides a way for your customers to find out more about you, as does your social media presence. In reality, your homesteading business is selling you and your unique approach to business. Let's be honest. Your customers can buy a tomato anywhere, but they can't support a unique and hard-working indivi individual like yourself, my back hurts.
by shopping in a big box grocery store. So let your customers get to know you. Your website can be as simple or as complicated as you'd like and can afford, but it should include some basic information. One, contact information. Your phone number, physical address, and email address. Your customers will want to call and email you about your operation and to find out what products you have available. While sometimes it can be time-consuming, always take the time to be polite and open with your customers, whether they're visiting, calling, or otherwise reaching out to you. Okay. Hours of operation. These aren't the hours you're working, but the hours you're willing to see members of the public. Remember, you want to see potential customers and make yourself available to them. But you don't want to do it to the detriment of the work on your homestead. Consider changing your hours of operation based on the season making them shorter during the busy harvest and planting seasons and longer in the off season when you might have more time to meet with customers. Market availability. If you're going to be at a farmer's market, CSA drop-off point, or anywhere your products will be sold, restaurants, grocery stores, etc., put it on your website. You want your customers to be able to find your products where, wherever they may be. However, if you're not going to be consistently at any location, do not list it. You are trying to, if you are trying out a market and only expect to be there once or twice during a season, don't list it as a regular spot on your website. Customers who go to a market or location and don't find you will be frustrated and eventually stop coming to see you no matter where you are. Product availability. You don't have to list every tomato variety or vegetable cultivar on your website, even though it's a good idea to do so. But you do want to let your customers know, at least in broad strokes, what they can expect from you. If you sell mixed vegetables, eggs, honey, and beeswax candles, your customers should be able to find out on your website. Update this section immediately if there's ever any additions or changes to the list. Pictures of you and your operation. Again, homesteading businesses thrive on personal connections with their customers. Your customers want to know who you are and more about what you do. Images of both things help your customers feel like they know you. Growing methods. If you're an organic or conventional farmer, tell your customers. And don't sugarcoat it. List any certifications your operations may have as well as information about how you produce your products and what's important to you. Your customers want to know how your products are grown and produced. Then they can, be made inform then they can make informed decisions about their purchases. Don't worry so much about being organically certified. Just explain to your customers in as simple terms as possible how you produce your products and why you use the methods you do. Ugh, this couch. Got it cleaned off and supported me on that side, but it's still scrunching too much. For example, if you grow radishes, but you spray your radishes with a pesticide, explain it on your website that you have battled insects and insect infestations on your radishes for years, and the only way you can get those vegetables to market is by using that particular pesticide. If your customers know the reasoning behind your decisions, they're more likely to understand and appreciate that. However, don't lie to your customers. If you grow food conventionally, don't tell them you use organic methods. Lying to your customers is unethical, and the damage it can cause when you're found out, you will be found out. It is not worth it. In addition to having a website, you will need to establish a social media presence. Facebook and Twitter are the bare minimums, and you should also be willing to think outside the box. Here is a brief list of some of the social media outlets you should know, know about and why. Facebook. Facebook is in intuitive, flexible, and Access to Ubiquitous. Well, can't talk today. The social media behemoth boosts more boosts more participants than any other social media outlet, which means you can avoid it only to your detriment. The great thing about Facebook is its wide variety of options to engage your audience and customers. You can post photos, galleries, videos, notes, and product lists, and more every day. The biggest tip regarding Facebook or any social media site for that matter is consistency and engagement. Post regularly and respond as quickly as possible to any requests for information, criticisms, or questions. Just remember, mm. Facebook is a public forum, so act on your page as you would in any capacity in which you present, represent your business. Be courteous, polite, and helpful. Mm. 
kind of scrunch and it hurts. Ah, oh, okay, good. Alright, okay. Twitter. Much more concise than Facebook, Twitter's 140 character limit is actually more of a strength than a weakness. While Facebook is powerful and all encompassing, Twitter boasts nearly as many users but with a quicker interface, both in terms of use and interaction. That means you can disseminate, disseminate useful information to your followers faster. So whenever you have a sale, a market con cancellation, or any other information your customers need to know, Twitter is the go-to spot. Pinterest. Pinterest is the scrapbook of social media. The service allows you to share and store articles and points of interest. This is a great tool for teaching your customers more about you and what's important to you. Favor biodynamic agri agriculture, blah, 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 blah. Pin news articles about the movement to your boards. Want to discuss the difference between heirloom varieties of sweet potatoes? Pin a list article from another site. You can also pin blog posts and image galleries from your own website, allowing you a chance to brag about you, your products, and your homestead, further connecting you to your customers. Etsy. More of a sales point than a social media site, Etsy still lets you connect to your customers and provides you a chance to increase your overall sales and profit margins. Better for handicrafts and do-it-yourself projects than food products. Etsy is the craft fair of the internet. You can use the site to sell your fiber arts, including raw fleece or anything else you, can, you happen to produce. This site also serves as a showcase for your products. So make sure you, to put your best foot forward by showcasing attractive images of your products for everyone to see. Ravelry. One of my favorite social media sites, this quirky, esoter es esoteric corner of the internet is best described as the Facebook for crocheters and knitters. Rarely allows you... <laughs> I cannot talk today. Sorry, guys. Ravelry allows you a chance to connect with other fiber artists who can offer you unique ideas, patterns, and marketing opportunities. While you can advertise your wares on Ravelry, any fleece or yarn you produce would probably be of value to others on the site. It's better to think of Ravelry as a brain trust in all aspects of the fiber arts. So you can reach out to other crafters and find out how they're selling their wares as well as tips to keep your costs down. Local avenues. Another often overlooked marketing opportunity occurs at the point of sale. Whenever you sell your goods and services, be it at the farmer's markets, local restaurants, craft fairs, or elsewhere, you should take every opportunity to let your customers know exactly where their goods are coming from and how to get more of them. This can be done with signage, but look for other opportunities as well. If you sell at restaurants, ask, ask the owners if they can put information about your products on their menu. For example, Bob's Burgers uses tomatoes produced locally by the Jones Family Farmstead. If they can't, menus are often printed well before produce vendors are determined. Ask if they can add your homestead business the next time menus are printed. In the meantime, ask them if you can put a flyer up in the window on their door or on their bulletin board. Do the same at grocery stores by creating small signs that identify where the produce comes from. For handicrafts, make labels to let your customers know more about your operation. And if you have a CSA, include a flyer in your CSA boxes each week. Sure, the CSA shareholder already knows where they got their CSA box, but their friends and neighbors won't always know, so tucking a flyer or brochure in the box will give your, give your shareholders a chance to let others know about it. So, if your shareholders are ever asked about where they get their delicious butter beans, they can just hand over the flyer. Whenever possible, make sure your signs, flyers, and other marketing materials reference your website. While you might not be able to spread the word about everything you do when selling a limited space of a flyer, your web address will let people know where they can go to find out more about you and your products. And that is it for Section 3 and Chapter 11 on Marketing. Section four is learning to love the fiber arts. So, kind of excited to get to that part because, all right, hey, the, I'm, the 
money end of it, the financing, the business plan, the marketing, you know, that's all important. But I get really excited when it goes into like the how to stuff of everything. So I'm going to go ahead and get off from here and get this uploaded and. Shut up. No, I will, I'll definitely do some more videos, but I will. Do, I'll see you guys in the next video and remember to do your research, guys. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the like and make sure you share the videos. Hit the notification bell and click on all. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.